some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. When I got out of Percy's cab, a group of rebels charged at me and started to threaten me with weapons of all sorts. I almost got thrown into a jail cell, but Percy managed to calm the rebels down and explain everything to them. They gave me food, water, a bed, and a roof over my head for the night, which I was very grateful for. I lay there in my bed, mentally preparing myself for the horrors of this world that await me. As my eyes slowly closed, I drifted off into a deep sleep. The next morning started with a lot of noise, people screaming and yelling, sirens blaring and gunshots firing. I ran outside to see what all the commotion was about. I was surprised to see the rebels with their guns locked on James. He looked scared and confused. I looked at him and realized this wasn't the James of this world. In fact, he was from mine. I ran through the crowd of rebels and asked them to hold their fire. And while doing so, I recognized the rebel leader that was Charlie Sand, Edward's driver. He looked like he had been through several wars and had a bionic arm. I told him the story of how he got here and about Edward's gruesome fate. He was shocked when he heard the sad news and a small tear trickled down his cheek. They approached James and started to try and calm him down. I told him I was Keith Gordon's driver and he remembered me. We all talked for a while. I found out how Edward was Charlie's favorite Indian. He said that he deserved better and I agreed. He told me how the rebels were fighting this war, for the freedom of all people and engines of Soldor. The Empire was led by an evil dictator, Emperor Sir Topham Hatt. He's a person who controls the island of Soldor with fear and wants to destroy the rebellion at all costs. I told him Sir Topham Hatt of my world was the complete opposite. He was a loving, caring person that understood the feelings of his fellow Indians, which he found hard to believe. He hoped that I would travel to Mapford's stronghold with Percy and prevent this attack from taking place. If I didn't, many rebels would most likely perish in the firefight, so I agreed. We would take care of James and prepare a backup plan in case we failed. The rebellion armed me with a few weapons, including a pistol and a pocket knife. I ran over to Percy and got inside his cab. Percy was old goodbye and we set off down the main line on our important mission to stop the Empire's attack.
We arrived at Map Ford's stronghold hours later, but we were too late. Everybody had left, but some trucks remained carrying bullets, gunpowder, and explosives. We quickly hatched a plan, and I ran into the radio control room. I walked up to the massive control panel and attempted to send a voice record into the Empire. This is General Keith. Stand down from the attack. The rebels have launched a counterattack and are headed back to Map Ford's stronghold. But the message couldn't be sent because there was no signal. The Empire must have shut it off before they left. All of a sudden, as he started to whistle frantically as Thomas screeched to a halt beside him, I ran out of the radio control room and dove into Percy's cab. The two engines charged towards Tidmouth Sheds. Percy quickly thought of a plan and managed to get behind Thomas. She announced that we had to go back to Normandy to see if there were any survivors. I guess we were about to find out soon enough. We raced away from Nedstick Mouth Sheds, but while Percy reinsured me that Normandy was just an outpost compared to the main base. 